David, President Obama has uh, introduced his budget proposal uh, today, Monday. Uh, this is the first official unveiling, although we've known for some time what some of the components might be. But there's no getting around the fact that he has a huge deficit to deal with, and some of the tactics for dealing with that, really, it's really unclear whether they can be effective over the long term. I mean, talk about some of the struggles he faces uh, from here on out. You know, Jane, there's the number we've all heard by now, which is that the deficit this year would be $1.6 trillion, which was roughly the size of many of the budgets during the Clinton administration. So that gives you a, a sense of, of where we've come. But what really struck me in going through the documents was looking at the long-term budget and deficit projections. These stretch out to 2020. And what they show is that even come 2020, you, the projection is that the United States would have budget deficits that are 4 and 5% of gross national product. Our one this year is 11% of gross national product. Now, we've had at various moments in history big budget deficits before, end of the Civil War, end of World War I, end of World War II. But what this is projecting is long-term budget deficits above that magic 3% of gross domestic product. Because above that number, basically your deficits are building faster than your nation's productivity is building. So David, what does it mean to a country's future and to its economic health uh, to have this much money, to be borrowing this much money? Well, at home it means that presidents beyond President Obama would have a very difficult time coming up with a new domestic discretionary program of any kind. More and more money gets eaten up by Medicare, Social Security, and of course the service on the debt, just making the interest payments on the debt. Abroad, it means that the rest of the world knows that the United States does not have much money to spend on spreading its influence around the world. And we've already been through several years in which the Chinese have done a much better job of this than we have, buying up influence and oil contracts all around the world. Uh, but it suggests that over the next 10 years, that problem will become even bigger. So, David, what, um, is there any way to tackle these deficits short, short of cutting some of these big programs like Medicare, uh, Social Security, uh, uh, programs that are um, you know, politically really hard to to cut, frankly. Well, the essential deadlock in Washington these days, and the reason so many people say that our system is, is broken in part, is that you have Democrats who say, we cannot touch the entitlement programs, we cannot touch many of their favorite um, uh, spending programs, and you have Republicans who say, we cannot raise taxes, and to raise taxes, particularly in difficult economic times, uh, is even worse. Uh, President Obama is making the case that uh, the best way to deal with this in part is to let many of the Bush era tax cuts on families making over $250,000 a year expire over the next year and, and they're scheduled to expire uh, anyway. Uh, but even with those, even if Congress allows every one of those to expire, and there's good reason to question whether they would, you still have these enormous deficits. And what's fascinating about the Obama projections is that the deficits go down in the mid part of this decade, and then they come back up again around 2020. So by that time, he'll no longer be in office, no matter whether he gets another term or not. But, so, but what, what can he do now? What's the president to do now to prevent that from happening down the road? Well, the main reason that those uh, numbers go back up is, uh, Jane, that you and I start collecting Social Security around that time and a lot of other people who are around our age. And I'll keep that age out of this broadcast. But, <laughs> Sooner uh, for some of us than others, fact, right? <laughs> the, right. The fact of the matter is that uh, you have this big cohort of baby boomers who uh, then, you know, are, are collecting up Social Security uh, and uh, using up more and more of the Medicare uh, uh, funding. And that's why the president tried and so far has failed to get his arms around, around the medical spending. But the medical spending is, is just a piece of this. Uh, and, you know, surprisingly, 
even the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, while significant this year, are a diminishing piece of this as you get into the out years. So one way or the other, the bottom line is somewhere, some president down the line is going to have to wrestle with these big entitlement programs or the deficit will just be staggering. Well, it's not simply that it's staggering, but you reach a point where deficits get to be so big that they affect a nation's ability to operate in the world. You know, I spent many years as a foreign correspondent in Japan, and these kind of deficits were unimaginable when I arrived in Japan in the late 1980s. By the 1990s, they became a fixture of Japanese society. And by the past 10 years, you saw them begin to really erode Japan's influence to the point that this year, Japan's going to be overtaken as the world's number two economy uh, by China. Uh, so, so they do have a long-term corrosive effect. So and that's what the United States potentially faces if we just don't get a handle on this. It, it's, it's not only an effect on deficits, but it's an effect on power.